I got to ask you that question. Halane or halaye? That's what it comes down to. Do you think that Slovenia deserves another qualification? And Calvin thinks that's hilarious. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, we are here to talk about the Slovenian entry and rank it, provide our superior expertise in our expert panel. Uh, kidding, of course, we don't know what we're talking about, but let's talk Slovenia. Let's talk Eurovision. What's up, you fools? Matt, ESC United, your favorite Eurovision channel. So, uh, what's their names? Uh, they're not easy to pronounce for me. Zala Kraj, Gasper Santel. Did I say that right, Kelvin? You're better at this. I think so. All right. Anyway, they won the Slovenia national final, EMA. Um, the name of the song, Sebi. <laughs> It uh, was, to me, it's a weird national final that since 10 songs competed and then a jury completely chooses just two songs. Like the televoters have no say out of the 10 songs, the jurors pick two and then the televoters decide between these two songs, you know, and which one should go to Eurovision. Clearly, we know by now who won and they won the song um, with 72.89% of the vote. That is a huge uh, victory. Everyone thought Raven was going to win, and then they just won this by landslide. That's a pretty powerful message, I think. Now, the Slovenians, as we know, they approve of this song. The question is, do we approve? Only one way to find out. We'll share our thoughts, and then at the very end, the scores. Um, I'll go first this time around. This song, to me, is weird. But good weird. Like, good weird. Not like, ew, weird. I, you know what I mean? Like, I love the fact, first of all, it's in Slovenian. Uh, totally works for the song. Yeah, like that kind of song. I don't know how well it would work in English. I don't know. I'm trying, like, I don't even want to think about it. Um, very atmospheric, um, relaxing. Like, I want to get a massage, listen to the song. It's that kind of song to me. Um, it's not exciting in that sense that, um, you know what I mean, right? When I say, like, it's not like in your face. Uh, but songs don't always have to be that way. Um, it's its own niche its own sound, and um, I'm really, I don't know what else to say, I'm really fascinated by it. It's different, and if you watch my videos, I like different, if it's done right, of course. So, um, if you picture this on the Eurovision stage, right, I'm thinking, like, okay, they're doing this right now, how will this stand out? How will this work? Songs don't have to have, like, a drop or a catchy melody to be memorable, right? I'm not saying it has to be that, I always have to have that moment. You just have to have something that's memorable. Something that really stands out. And this song is a feeling, right? It's a specific energy that it radiates. And um, that's their selling point to me. And they need to really be able to do that. I don't know if this will come across, how it'll come across on stage at Eurovision. It needs to be believable. I think the song is believable. I enjoy it. I wasn't a big fan of the staging. And I understand people like this. I mean, like, well, because she didn't look, they always looked at each other. She never connected with the camera. I'm like, well, she's singing to him. Da, da, da. I'm like, I get that. I get that in Slovenian, it makes sense. But to someone who doesn't speak Slovenian and it's a TV show, you need to connect with the viewers, not just the person that's sitting next to you, even if that's part of the song. If you don't speak the language and you're watching a TV show, there needs to be that there. And they need to work a little bit on the staging to me. But I think the song has a lot of potential. Uh, what about you, Melanie? You like it? Oh, I love this song, really. It is a song that I don't expect that it will be competing in the Euro Fishing Song Contest. It's a song that I really will listen in my own playlist. Mm -hmm. I was really surprised that uh, let me see, yeah, Slovenia chose this song. Because when I hear it, I was immediately in love. And when the song starts, it just takes me in the little bubble that they're singing in. And it just soothed me. And I'm just meditating. And they take me in their own little world. It really feels me that I'm part of their world and that just makes me so, I don't know, it just, I just love it. And I really have the feeling that it's so current that a lot of people who are watching the Eurovision, they think that Eurovision is about a lot of drama, a lot mm. of fireworks, you know. And then this song will come up and people will say, well, okay, okay, this is a song that I can hear on the radio. So I think that it's going to be a really good song. And I think that a lot of people at home will also love it because it's something which you will listen now on the radio. So I'm a big fan of it. All right. So uh, stamp of approval from Melanie. 
does it get this stamp of approval from Kelvin? Yes, definitely. Uh, and y'all have taken the words out of my mouth. It's I love the atmosphere that they create. I think that's the real star. I want to live yes. in the in as Melanie said, their own little the their own world. It just I feel transported when I listen to it. Uh, I think it would probably be more powerful for me if it were about half as long as it is. Uh, but I a think, minute and a half. Yes, like as a minute and a half stinger to like a big electronic concept album, and then you just, you just have this as like a sorbet aftertaste. I think it would be fantastic. Uh, but anyway, oh, going away from my fantasies about how I would write this song, I think the way they've written the song is fantastic. I think it's great. I think they are the perfect singers to create the world that they created. Up. The staging at EMA was really good. Slovenia, I know, have a little bit of a habit of maybe not realizing how big Eurovision stages are and sometimes just adapting their EMA stage like they did in 2015. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think if they stage it exactly as they did and they perform it exactly as they did, I think it could be really, really impactful. And I'm really excited to see what they do. And I love listening to it. All right, this is definitely getting hyped in our video. Fernando, are you uh, continuing or are you bring it, bring it down a little here to planet Earth? I, when it comes to staging, I totally disagree with Kelvin because last year, Slovenia said it all. He can't mention 2015. He should mention last year. Who expected Valania to go through the final? That was Not anybody. <laughs> so that's the good thing. They made it last year. They are in the first semi-final. They have a very, very, very good chance. Because I totally agree, the song is good, it's unique, has something different. But, there's a lot of buts which we're missing out here. And that is the first semi-final, and it's in the first half. And, again, Eurovision is a TV show, not just the song. And I'm a little bit scared, because the song can be lost lost in transition, especially if it goes, if it's in, in the first position, the second, number three, or the famous number four. Mm-hmm. And that is something which, it's a recipe, you know, it's, it's, it's part of the game. And, uh, well, it needs to have something unique. But, but, having a duet is not an easy job. Yep. Yeah. And it's very interesting, yeah, what you pointed out, Fernando, I completely agree, and I meant to say that in my portion as well, it's the thing, Slovenia is a really pretty song, and Calvin, as you you said, it transforms you, it's like meditative, it's like atmospheric, right? My concern is because this could be the song that could be the second song of the night. It's not going to be the opener, it's not an opener, they're not going to put it in first, but this could be technically the slower, (laughs) because the second song is a slower song, right? Yeah. Something like that, can it maintain that? atmosphere that people remember that feeling that they had at that moment like yeah. an hour later is it lost by then that would be my biggest thing if this yeah. would be like the last or second to last song i think people are still in that mood in that vibe and that is my biggest concern it's really that in the moment you're in that moment that song and that is so powerful and that's why i believe we need juries because they can at least rank them right yes. and televoters they don't rank them unfortunately um i don't know how you could do that but you know what i mean that's what i'm thinking if it would be ranked thing then i think it would do better but i'm worried that it could be forgotten, not because it's forgettable, but the the mood that you felt at that moment is has passed. The moment has passed. It's all, it sounds a little dramatic, but that's how I feel about it. That's my yeah. biggest concern about it. I think even things like what clip they choose for the recap could be really important for that. Um, it's that the, kind of the, song. That if they met, that if that they need to like make sure just do everything they can to make sure that people remember it. Now Fernando's got me really scared because now I'm thinking like, oh god, what if it what if it does get lost? What if that moment just happens and then goes? Yeah, that's my biggest fear. But we're not trying to be negative; it's realistic, and uh, it's too precious to be overlooked. I think. But let's find out how we feel about that song and our scores, overall ranking, and uh, we'll go from there. I'll go first. And I feel like um, this seems to be a very popular number. It's really a good song. I don't have much to add, but my points as of right now is 6.5. Melanie, what's your score? I gave it a 9 because, as I said, I really love it. It's just my own little bubble, and I love to be there. So, yeah. We all need our bubbles. Totally yes. get it. Kelvin, are you in the bubble or out of the bubble? I am not only in the bubble, I'm in Melanie's exact same yeah. bubble because I also gave it a nine. I think it I think I think it creates its atmosphere really beautifully and that's the real star for me. I think it's great. 
All right, Fernando. Are you in the bubble or did you bring the needle to prick the bubble? Let me know. Are you in the bubble, Matt? Am I? I am. I'm trying to get in. I'm waiting for the moment. I'm. I'm. I I'm like on the door. I, li I enjoy listening it when it's on, mm. but I don't listen to it on CD a whole lot. That's mm. my kind of thing. You know, I don't seek it out as much as I should. That's why it's not quite as high. But when it's on, it captivates me. I don't know. So, I can imagine this song after Finland. But anyways, I'm in the same spot of Matt's because I gave it at also six point five. All right. So there are two different perspectives. Two pairs. So, um, what's the overall score? What do you think, Callan? I'm going to put you on the spot. What do you think it is? I think this is actually going to be really high. Uh, what did you say the overall highest one was? Um, that's about 8.8 .8 or something like that. I think this could go, I think this could hover around 8, honestly. Okay. What do you think, Melanie? I think 7.5, something like that. Okay. Because you both have already 6, so yeah. you've yeah. downgraded it a little bit. Yeah, it's our fault. But yeah. the actual score is 6.69. No. Yeah, no it's not way. as high as you guys thought. So the ESC United team was not quite as on board with it. I started looking at your faces. Um, Melanie does not approve of that score overall, huh? No, no, no. I just, come on. This is so cozy in my bubble. You have to understand it. <laughs> And I understand Fernando because it's in the first half of the first semi, so it's it can be lost, but I think that it has a big potential if the station will be right. And it's such a good song. I I'm flabbergasted. I just <laughs> You too, Calvin, huh? Yeah, I'm surprised and disappointed yeah. uh by that score. I thought it I thought it would be a lot higher and I wish it were. I think it's awesome. I think it's great. There's a saving grace for you guys, because keep in mind, this is average, right? It only tells so much of a story because yeah. people don't vote against the song. So yeah, even the... if people who don't like it, they cannot, this is not Big Brother. You know, you're not going to, yeah. I vote to evict the Slovenia song. Mm -hmm. um, and Slovenia, to a lesser extent, it's like a mini Portugal or Iceland. Like those two songs are very polarizing, right? Mm. Like people love it or hate it. And that could often bring down your average score. And Slovenia, to a lesser extent, is the same way. I'm looking at the scores right now, which I'm going to put in the description box, the link to it. Um, it has a similar effect, to a lesser extent, but there are a lot of people who really like it, but there are a bunch of people who just don't connect with it and give it really low scores. And that is what happened here. But once again, they will not be able to vote against the song at Eurovision. And that's when, you, and I always use Neta Toy as an example. Not, there couldn't be further apart Slovenia and Neta, the song, style wise, yeah. right? But I'm referring to the polarizing effect. So many people despised Toy. And, um, but it didn't matter if they despised it. Because you, you, know, you only care about the people that will vote for it. And I think that's exactly what's happening in Slovenia. It's going to have a fair share of. Uh, Support. And that's why I think you have to take the average score with a grain of salt. So, but these are just our thoughts. And um, this is your chance, everyone. You can go to our poll. And um, that is the link is posted in the description box. And you can vote for it. Bring up the ranking a little bit. Um, it's your call or not. We'll leave it up to you. Um, we would love to hear from you. Leave your thoughts below in the comments section. We are busy. We got to move on to our next review. So uh, thanks for watching. Have a good day.